up. Cause some of Okay. about wearing my bib overalls. I go over to Tonda and said, Tonda, can you give me the straps? I can't reach the straps. She said, you got it on backwards. <laughs> I didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. You'll say, you know. But hey, I'm glad that you're here today looking for God to give us a good day. And boy, isn't this sunny outside? The weather's good and so forth. The horses either are here or on their way here. And boy, that stage coach was really comfortable, amen. amen. I was up here rocking on that, on that stage coach. It felt really good. But I tell you what, I'm glad there's airplanes, amen. If I'm going to Arizona or going to Japan or going to Africa, I want to get on a plane, amen. amen. Anyhow, but welcome to Roundup Sunday here at Anchor Baptist Church. We hope and pray you'll enjoy yourself and so forth. And we're looking forward to be a blessing to folks that are here and also on our live stream page. Thank you again for tuning in for us. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you for all you do for us. Give us a good service now. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, and amen. Amen. If you stay standing, number 51 in these little books, if you need them.
we heard about this man from Galilee. The Bible tells that Jesus was his name. Some will say that he was just a man like you and me. There was no greater reason why he came. But if I could take you to a humble little place where these blinded eyes were made to see. He opened up my heart and then he saved me by his grace. And now he means everything to me. crimes he had not done it was there he bought eternal life for you and me making sure the victory was won how could i describe to you the blessings that he is i have never felt this love before all i know is now i strive to be completely his and every day he means even more
there rocking and rolling just a minute ago on that stage coach. Come up here, Gary. Tell me, coach, where you got that stage coach at real quick? Where'd you get it at? Where'd you, where, how did you get it? I've had it for probably over 30 years. And uh, there was a, actually a company out in, out in Missouri that, that made them. And so this stage coach is partly over 100 years old and partly of it's 40 years old, 50 years old. So, but we've had it, we've used it for weddings, we've used it for funerals. It's been on the, you might have even seen it and didn't know it, on opening day at the Reds, it's been on behind home field for opening day, carried the VIPs out on the field. And so that's down Cincinnati Reds on uh, April. And uh, we've been all over the country. It's been out in Montana, it's went across Canada. It did the Matisse Trail with a six horse hitch, which is from Lodge Grass, or from Red Lodge, Montana, down into Clark, Wyoming. That's up and down like this, so that, that has really done the real work. But I, I have to say one thing. You may have some VIPs, but you never had Pastor P, amen? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Let's give him a round of applause for being the stage coach, all right? Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Lon, go ahead and what you got to do now. Go ahead, go ahead and shake a hand on Robert plays through that.
Welcome, man. What a, what a blessing it is. Thank you for that good singing. Gene, you're here today. Praise the Lord. You got your son, daughter-in-law, grandchildren. Wow. Praise the Lord on that. Okay. Open your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. And um, I look forward to Roundup Sunday every year. And... Uh, uh, we, um, I remember one time we had a Roundup Sunday in Belgium, and uh, I, rent, I rented some ponies, about three or four ponies, and when I rented those ponies, uh, the owner came in and dropped them off and left, and uh, I, never, I never took care of ponies before, amen, and, but them ponies were good ponies, amen, they just did whatever I told them to do, amen. Which my wife would, no, just kidding. I said, no, just kidding. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that, you know. You know. But anyhow, uh, but we are glad that you're here today. In Luke chapter number 14, we're going to pick up reading here in verse number um, 16. In Luke chapter 14, verse number 16, the Bible says, Then said he unto them, A certain man had a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came, that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. And yet 
there is room. I want to say, aren't you glad there is always room for you in the house of the Lord? Amen. There's always room. Verse number um, 23, and the Lord said unto his servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. I'm going to preach on this, the Roundup Sunday. And what our goal is here on Roundup Sunday to help folks, those watching online, maybe uh, you are, maybe you used to be in church or maybe you used to come and be involved in the things of God or maybe you're wanting to know about that. We're going to preach on Roundup Sunday because one day there's going to be a big roundup in the sky one day, amen. That's called the rapture of the church. Jesus Christ is coming again and so forth. And I don't want to miss that roundup one day in the sky coming here to those that know the Lord. So with that thought in mind, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you again for all that you do for us. I pray you'll bless us now. Bless the reading of thy word. Thank you for the Bible, we pray in Jesus' name, Lord, and amen. Now we want to come here to chapter number 14 of the book of Luke. And there was a supper given here in verse number 16. Jesus says, a certain man made a great supper and bade many. Now to understand this parable that Jesus is talking about, we got to go back in time and understand the culture and the climate in this day, okay? Now let me, I'm going to read some things here to you about the social uh, climate of those days because you'll, read, you'll see the reason why the uh, the, the master of the house, the host, was so upset for. Let me give you this background a little bit. Well-known social customs of the day provided the basis for this parable. Inasmuch as elaborate and costly preparations were involved in putting on a banquet, invitations were extended to guests well in advance. So before this happened, before they planned this, the master of the host, the host, he sent out months in advance, letting everybody know when the banquet was ready. And then he would send his servant out to follow up with that and so forth. So when the invitations were given well in advance, the people that were bidden, the people that were invited gave all indications that they were going to be there. They were going to be present at that time. Okay, so uh, that's, that's the backdrop of that a little bit, okay? And it says here, when the banquet was prepared for the guests who had accepted the invitation, a servant was sent forth. The servant announced that the banquet was now ready. In his parable, our Lord uh, sent an invitation that had been extended. So this, ex this invitation was extended, okay? By the way, I want to tell you something. Aren't you glad that Thank God for this parable here, but there's also a greater invitation for the whole world, amen? Because Jesus Christ died on the cross and he extends the invitation of being in his family by, for everybody. Everybody can come, that invitation, okay? And I'm glad that uh, back at Calvary, when Jesus died on that cross and rose again the third day, he gave the invitation for God so loved the world that whosoever believed him, thank God that invitation was given here, given a long time ago, all right? So that invitation was given, and then all of a sudden, okay, um, they began to make excuses here. And, um, and, and the thing about it is, when they made these excuses, these excuses did not uh, uh, give them a clear passage to reject it because already previously they said we were going to come. And so this host, the master of the house, he went to great expense to have everything taken care of as far as that goes. OK. All right. So then we see here verse number uh, 18 here. Uh, and with all uh, they one consent began to make an excuse. The first said in verse number 18, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Now, by the way, I think about this here. Um, this first excuse had wrapped around it material uh, possessions. Uh, why would someone buy a piece of property and not look at it first? Amen. Of course, you're going to go look at it. Uh, I remember we were trying to buy some property here in the area and um, uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, the property that, that Tonda liked, it had no house on it. 
um, it had a slope going down on it and everything. And I said, well, I don't want to have to have a slope, a, a piece of property. I didn't want to have to build a basement, all those different things, whatever on that. And then uh, the house I ended up buying in Leesburg, I'm about two blocks from that other property. It's kind of interesting. Now, my property is kind of lat, lat level and flat where I have now, which is a lot better being sloped. Um, but this man, first of all, this first guy that gave an excuse, um, that land would still be there after the banquet. He, could have stood, he still could have went, but he gave an excuse, okay? That was the first one. Look at verse number um, 19. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I do prove them, I pray thee, have me excused. This second man that gave an excuse, he had what they call an excuse about his business possessions. He bought five yoke of oxen. Now, by the way, back in that day, if you had one yoke of oxen, you were pretty well off. This man had five yokes of oxen. And by, you know, as far as that goes, and so he, he, had, he was a very wealthy man. So this man, like the first man, he had material possessions. He bought a land. This second man, he was more involved in his business possessions. He bought all these oxen. He wanted to go prove them and so forth, whatever. So he put his business dealings above coming to the invitation. By the way, you know something? I know people right now, today, they make excuses why they don't come to church. They put material possessions above why they should come to church. They put business things going on. You know, they put business possessions and what's going on with that. They put that ahead of coming to church and, and finding out about God and everything. A lot of people, just as in this day, they make excuses as far as that goes, okay? Look at the next verse here. And verse number um, 20. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. Now, me looking at these three excuses, the last one got my vote, amen? When you get a wife, things change, amen? I told you the story a long time ago. When I first got married to Tonda, I came home one day. Uh, I came home from Bible college. I was getting ready to go to work. I come in the house, haven't seen her all day. I wasn't there. I walk in the door, and she's crying. She's crying. And I'm thinking, now, as a man, if I'm going to cry, I got a reason why I'm going to cry. So I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for her to tell me. I said, Tonda, what is wrong? Why are you crying? I don't know. And I cannot compute. A man, if I'm, I mean, I hit my toe. I hit my hand. I mean, I fell down. I got stung by a wasp or something like that. Something happened, you know. But now, after almost 33 years, I totally understand it. Amen. I get it. Amen. You know, when she's crying, something's going on. All she wants is to go put a little tap on her hand or put a little arm around her, hug her and so forth, whatever that, you know. And I've also learned this. Sometimes when she's crying or she's upset, she don't want no advice. She just wants me to hold her, you know. So sometimes, sometimes, Ruth, I'll tell, I say, Tonda, do you want my advice or do you want me to comfort you? She says, comfort me, Amen. So that way I understand clearly what she wants, amen? You know, sometimes, you know, our wives, sometimes they think that we can read minds. Well, why didn't you do that? I said, do what? You never asked me to do. How am I supposed to know? You're supposed to know, amen? I said, well, okay, amen, you know, you know, as far as that goes. So anyways, so this last man, he made an excuse for his wife. So this guy here, he put natural affections. Nothing wrong with being married. That's a good thing, being married. Nothing wrong with it at all. But he put natural affections instead of coming to the bank. So all three of these men gave excuses why they didn't come. So we see the, we see the background here in chapter 14 of Luke. Then we see the bidden, those three people that were bidden to come. Uh, we see here in verse number um, 17, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And by the way, I want to tell you something. That's a great invitation now. To, did you know God's ready for you? God made all preparations for you. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, maybe you say, preacher, I'm on the outside looking in. I'm on the wrong side of the fence. Amen. If you're on the wrong side of the fence or the cow stall or whatever it may be, you can get on the right side of the fence today. Amen. Because Jesus Christ has made all things ready. Amen. What do you have to do to get to heaven? Nothing but believe in his 
finished sacrifice. Amen. He's done it all. Okay. So we see here, we see the background and we see the bin, the, the, the bidden, those that were bidden. But number three, I want you to see here because of the background, because we see those that were bidden to this banquet, we see number three, because those three gave excuses and they did not come. Guess what we see here? Number three, we see the beneficiaries. Amen. There are some folks that benefited because they didn't, because they gave excuses and they didn't come to the supper, some people benefit from that. By the way, I want to tell you something. There's a greater picture here too. Do you know the nation of Israel as a whole rejected the Messiah? They rejected the Lord Jesus Christ and they put him on a cross and they hung him there. The nation of Israel rejected him. And because they rejected him, guess what? The Gentiles whoop, can get in, Amen. We have an opportunity. Yeehaw! Amen. Amen. Where's my hat at, by the way? My hat's out there. I forgot. I got my hat's out there, okay? You know? Um, but we have an opportunity because they, they rejected him. You know, you and I have an opportunity. Look here, uh, look here in your Bible here in verse number um, 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry. Now, why was he angry? Why was he upset? He went to great expense. He went to great cost to make this banquet. Those three individuals, they said a long time ago, we're coming, we will come, just let us know the time, the day it is, and we'll be there. So he went to great expense, and all three of them gave excuses, okay? By the way, when you stand before God one day, what kind of excuse will you give? Why didn't you come? Why didn't you do it? Why didn't you put Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Okay, look here, verse number 21. Then the master of the ants became angry. and said, go out quickly out into the streets and lanes of the city and bring hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Look at the beneficiaries, okay? The poor, destitute of wealth. They were helpless. They were they were powerless. They lacked every, they had nothing. They were, they, they were uh, hopeless, the poor. And, and by the way, I'm glad that's people like you and me, amen. Aren't you glad that because uh, the nation of Israel, they rejected the Messiah, you and I have an opportunity to get the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And so, um, I, so the, the beneficiaries, the poor, okay? And then we see here, not only the poor there in verse number 21, we also see the halt, I mean the maimed. And the maimed are those that are crippled, okay? They, they can't walk. They need someone to help them and so forth, whatever. All that. Then it also uses the word halt. That's a kind of interesting word, the word halt. I think about riding a horse, you say halt. Uh, how do you, uh, or, or, oh no, whoa, I mean, maybe, maybe it's whoa, I don't know what you say. What do you say, Veronica? Second one, okay, good to go, second one, okay, you know. Anyways, so the, 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 the ones that were halt, they actually lost a foot. They have no foot. So look here, the beneficiaries, the poor, the poor, the, the, poor, the, 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 uh, the, the maimed, the, the, the halt and so forth, whatever on here. Verse number 21, and it says here also too, and the blind. Look at all of the beneficiaries of those that were rejected. Because the three people that were bidden rejected the host and did not come and they made excuses. Look at those that got to come in. The poor, the halt, the maimed, and the blind. And then verse 23, 22 says this, and the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded and yet there is room. Man, th th this banquet was so big and so, so it had everything there provided for and so forth and they still had room. Do you know something I found out a long time ago? Heaven's big enough for everybody. Heaven is big enough for everybody. There's a place for you in heaven if you'll come through the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? If you put your faith and trust in him and him alone. And so we see here, he said, yet there is room. And this is where I get the roundup here in verse number 23. Notice what the master said. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. And so here we see the servant was given and said, hey, go out there and go everywhere you can into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Let me tell you something, folks. That's the most important thing. Sometimes, 
Sometimes, maybe you're like me, I've got a neighbor across my street, a brand new, I, I moved in there, so I walked across the street a couple days ago and gave them a flyer and invited them to come to church. They didn't come today, but that, that's not my, my responsibility was to go and invite them. If they come, that's, that, that's up to them, okay? And by the way, um, you can't make someone get saved. You can't. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a choice people make, putting their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see here the, ser the servant went out there and he went to the highways and hedges. And aren't you glad that everybody is welcome to come to God's big roundup in the sky one day? Everybody is welcome, okay? Let me give you a, a couple thoughts here I wanted to mention here about this here in Luke chapter 14. First of all, who else could we go out there and welcome? Who, could, who, could we, who, could, who else could be out there? Now, uh, one man was talking about this parable here in Luke 14, and he said, a lot of the folks that ended up coming to this banquet, they were not worthy, but they were welcomed. Let me tell you something. Do you know what, when it comes down to it, none of us are worthy of anything that God does for us, but guess what? We are all welcomed, Amen. Everybody is welcome. For God so loved the world. Amen. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ in Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 9, it talks about he tasted death for every man. Everybody can have this gift of salvation because of what Jesus did on that cross. What a blessing it was when you think about that. So this servant, he went out there and he didn't say, uh, he didn't ask about their status, their position, what they own, what they didn't have, okay? He went out there and invited everybody he could because there was still room. By the way, the church today, we have an obligation to go out there and we have an obligation to invite people to church all the time because why? There's still room, amen? There's still room, okay? All right, heaven's big enough for everybody. Now, the sad thing is everybody ain't gonna go to heaven, amen? That's the sad thing. You know, but they can go, amen? If they don't go, it's because they choose not to go. But heaven's big enough. God has done everything he can do. He made all things ready when it comes to that. And what a blessing it is, you know, on that. I'm so thankful and pray, thanking God for that there in chapter number uh, 14 of the book of Luke there, all right? Um, so let me give you three thoughts here I want to mention here, and I'll be done here. Three more thoughts. First of all, aren't you glad that if you're on Roundup Sunday and maybe you're brokenhearted, maybe uh, your, your spirit has been crushed. I don't know what everyone's been going through. I don't know what your life is, entails and everything, but let me tell you something. Jesus Christ is well, well ready to welcome those that are brokenhearted. Maybe your spirit has been crushed. Maybe you're going through some situations in your life that you just can't put a handle on. By the way, that's me all the time, amen? Last week, of my, last week, my son uh, called me, and uh, he was at home with my four grandchildren. His wife was out doing something, and all of a sudden, his shed on his property caught on fire. Don't know how it did it, but his lawnmower caught on fire. Amen? All right? And it was ignited, and the whole shed, all of his tools and everything were gone and so forth, and boy, he was just... He was just brokenhearted. And he lost all, you know, because, you know, you don't mess with a man's truck and tools. Amen? That's, you just don't do that, okay, you know, as far as that goes. It's like the pots and pans in the kitchen, amen? You know, last year, last year for Christmas, I got time to some pots and pans. She's had pot and pans for, I don't know, almost 20 years. I said, it's still a pot. It's still, it's a pot still works. Use the pot, amen? She said, you don't understand. It sticks. I said, put some butter in there, Amen? You know, but you know how it goes as far as that goes. So anyhow, I was, um, I was helping her the other day in the kitchen. Now, don't, don't, get, don't get the idea. I don't help her all the time, okay? Don't get the idea. I do. I don't, okay? But I was helping her that day in the kitchen. And boy, I tell you, I was taking that pan that she had, and I went around that thing, and all that stuff just fell right off. I said, Tana, that's nice. She said, yeah, when you get new pans, it's nice, isn't it, amen? I said, well, okay, you got me there, Tonda, okay? You know, but hey, maybe you've been brokenhearted. Maybe you've got some problems you're going through and your life's been shattered, your spirit's been crushed. Let me tell you something. When you think about Jesus Christ, he's made all things ready for you. 
Amen. This master of the home, he made all things ready. The three that were invited, they didn't come. And so he sent his servant out there into the highways and hedges, amen, to bring them in to that banquet. I'm telling you, that's our goal is here on Roundup Sunday. If you're brokenhearted, if you've been through some problems in your life, you came to the right place because why? I can't help you. They can't help you, but he can help you. Amen. He's able to help you. He's able to take care of that. So I think about the brokenhearted. How about the backslidden? The backslidden. Maybe, maybe you're here today or maybe you're watching via live stream and so forth, and maybe you backslide on God. Maybe you used to be in church. Maybe you used to come to church and serve God and be involved in the work of God and help people and get help yourself. It's amazing when you put God first in your life, God not only helps you, but he helps you to help others as well too, amen? You know, it's a family affair because why? We got one thing in common. We got Jesus Christ in Palm. amen? He is the foundational thing. He is, he, he makes all things well when you think about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I think about the backslidden, those that used to be in church. By the way, when I read my Bible nowadays, I don't see no used to bees in the Bible. I see now a bees. Amen. What are you doing now? You say, preacher, I used to be in church. Well, I'll tell you what, if you used to be in church, ask God to forgive you and get back in church. Amen. Get back in church. Get back serving God. Get back reading your Bible and praying and living for God. Get back in church. It's important, amen, when it comes to that. I like what she said. She said amen over here, amen. You know, that's good, okay? I don't know if this is on purpose or not because if you don't say amen to me, I won't preach as long, amen? That, oh, <laughs> that's the deacon back there, amen? Thank God for... Thank God for friends like that, amen, you know. By the way, I appreciate that yesterday we had a lot of people come and help us clean, and the deacon was here probably almost five hours yesterday. Praise God for the deacon. I don't know what he was doing, but he was here, amen, you know, and uh, praise the Lord on that, okay. But we see here in Luke chapter 14 where he goes out there into the highways and hedges, and, it, and the goal here, he said, is that my house may be filled. And that word filled, I looked it up in the Strong's, and the word filled means God wants his house entirely filled. Amen. Do you know God's, God's goal and God's desire is? The Bible says the Lord is not, he, he is not, um, uh, what's the word? I, I forgot about it here. Let me see. Oh, Lord's not slack concerning his promise. He wants all men to come to repentance. Amen. That's what he wants. He wants everybody to come. He's made it all prepared. Amen. Now, some of you all here saying, preacher, I smell the hamburgers. I know you smell them, but hey, they'll, they'll, they'll be fine, amen. Tony said he's got it under control, amen, you know. So I'm just going to say to you is, I'm thankful that when I think about this, the Lord wants his house to be filled. And some people say, you know what, preacher, I, I, there are some churches that all they care about is numbers. That's not a problem because numbers mean people and people mean souls, Amen. You know, and by the way, in the Bible, there's a whole book called Numbers. Amen. Amen. You know, and by the way, God's not, a, God's not opposed to numbers. Amen. We shouldn't be either. I like to have numbers. Amen. I like looking at my bank account and I got to hide numbers. Amen. You know what I mean? You know, and uh, I know at the end of the month, I hope I have more numbers than I had less. Amen. You know what I'm saying as far as that goes. You know, now with COVID, you just... It's crazy what the thing goes, how expensive things are and everything nowadays. So we see here, in fact, chapter number 14, in his house. So we see about the brokenhearted. How about this here? Maybe today you're bewildered. That's another B word, bewildered. And the word bewildered means to be lost in a maze. Have you ever been lost and you're, you're just, I mean, not, not so much geographically lost, but you're just lost. You don't have nowhere to belong. You don't know what's going on with your life. You're just, you just need some sound footing. You need some direction in your life, okay? It's called the B-I-B-L-E, amen, the Bible, amen. The Bible, you know, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. Right here, the Bible. Basic instruction before leaving earth. So yeah, when, you, when you think about direction and your guides in your life, you got the, the word of God, the Bible that can help you and guide you in your decisions and your choices that you make. All right. So those that are broken hearted, God says, come. Those that are bewildered, God says, come. How about this? Those that are blemished. 
You ever been blemished before? That means tarnished, injured, or marred by someone or something. I tell you what, um, I'm glad that when uh, you look at each, we look at ourselves in the mirror, we find blemishes all the time, amen? You know, now there are some times, oh, I remember this a long time ago, a long time ago, this guy was uh, talking about the book of Genesis and um, you know how God made Adam and Eve. He took the fine dust of the earth and made Adam. And then he, of course, took the rib and made Eve and so forth. And one old preacher said this. He said, we all came from dirt. All came from dirt. But he did say this. Some dirt is prettier than other dirt. Amen. And I agree with that. Amen. You know, and, uh, and some folks, well, I, I, I don't believe that. Well, if you wear a white shirt sometimes and take your shirt off around the collar, what you find? You find dirt, amen, you know? And so we all came from dirt. So we think about this here, that, that those that, that are, have blemishes in their lives, and, and sometimes, you know, some of those blemishes we're born with, we had no choice about them. Some of the blemishes that we have, we've caused by our own, uh, own doing. Some of the blemishes that we have are caused by somebody else in this world and so forth. But I want to tell you something. I'm glad that Jesus Christ here is, he's here to help the brokenhearted. He's, help, he's here to help the bewildered people. And he's also here to help those that have blemishes, those that have faults and those that need him. He's here to help us all. So we think about this here, the Roundup Sunday today. Where, where are you at? Where, where do you fall in that picture at? Okay, how do you see that? Um, because one day, the roundup of the sky, it's coming one day. It's coming, and that's why it's important. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. Just because, just because you were given an invitation, it doesn't mean that you're in. You know, um, in the book of Isaiah, it says, come, let us reason together. God says, come. Throughout the whole Bible, God says to every individual, God says, come and let's have a talk. Come and let us reason together, okay? Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. I don't understand how that happens, but that's by the transaction of God. When I come to Jesus with my imperfections, when I come to Jesus with my blemishes, when I come to Jesus with my brokenheartedness, guess what he does? He takes that all and he wipes it all away and gives me a brand new creature. And so I got God living in me. Thank what a blessing it is when I become a child of God, when I put my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So you think about this here, this roundup one day is going to come. The invitation has been given, okay? The invitation for every individual, those watching me in live stream right now, God invites you to come. God invites you to come to his son, Jesus Christ, okay? And there's no one like Jesus, amen? There's no one like him. And what a blessing it is when you think about the son of God that came. He, the son of God became a son of man so sons of men could become sons of God, amen? We have that opportunity. We have that privilege here. So we see here in Luke chapter number uh, 14. Notice here it says here in verse number uh, 23 one more time. It says, and the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. By the way, let me tell you something, church, Anchor Baptist Church, we dare not become inward focused, amen? If we are inward focused, we're gonna die one day, amen? We as a church have got to be outward focused, amen? We gotta go out there right here in Courthouse, right here in Fayette County, Clinton County, Highland County. Once we do that, then we gotta go across the whole world at the same time. We got to be outward focused, not just inward focused, okay? A lot of churches die because all they do, they care about inwardly here. They want to make sure they have this brand new stuff. And this, I, I like having new stuff, but new stuff doesn't, come, doesn't even compare, doesn't even compete with having peace in my heart that God gave me when I got saved, amen? You can't, there's no comparison on that. So he says here, yeah, I want my house to be filled. So church, help us to always. And that's why we have, we had friend day this year. We had vacation Bible school. Now we got a roundup Sunday today, okay? The reason why we do these things, so people can come and hear the word of God and those that are backslidden, those that are bewildered, those that are brokenhearted, they can find hope in the midst of a crooked generation, amen? 
You know, what a blessing it is when you think about that there, okay? And notice here, verse 24, notice what the Lord of this, of, of this service says here, verse number 24. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Just because you have an invitation doesn't mean you're in the family, amen? Hey, one more, say this here. God is everybody's creator, but God is not everybody's father, amen? You've got to be born into his family. So on this Roundup Sunday of 2024, maybe you're on the outside looking in. Maybe you're bewildered. Maybe you're brokenhearted. Maybe you've got some blemishes in your life. Let me tell you something. You came to the right place. Jesus Christ can help you right now with your problem. Amen. And I'm glad that Jesus is a now God. Amen. He's not a tomorrow God. Yes, he's an altogether God, all time God. Amen. So many times I think about this here too that um, we try, some people try to, they try to promise more than they can deliver. Guess what? I don't promise anything. He promises it all, amen? We learned in our Sunday school class this morning, we had our, our discipleship class, and we learned that God cannot lie, amen? Aren't you glad that our God can't lie, amen? If he says it, that's it, amen? God said it, and that settles it, and I believe it, amen? You know, and so we think here of this, passage of scripture in Luke chapter 14 about this roundup Sunday. Where do you find yourself at? How about this here, child of God? What have you been doing for the Lord? Are you getting involved? Okay. Now I know some of you all are like me. I just turned a big 6-0 this year. I can't do what I used to do. Amen. But what I can do for God, I want to do for God. Amen. I want to be involved. I want to serve him. And by the way, serving the Lord, it, it completes you. You know, it helps you to get involved. If you're born again and you got saved, you haven't been baptized, hey, the next step is get baptized, amen? After you get baptized, you join the church, amen? And then you get involved in serving the Lord, amen? You know, everybody needs to be involved in a local New Testament church, amen? You know, and I was telling somebody the other day, I said, uh, did you know that Anchor Baptist Church is the best church in Washington Courthouse? And they said, how do you know? I said, because I'm a member there, amen? You know, and then one person said, you're the preacher. Well, I'm a preacher, but I'm still a member, amen? You know, you know, and you know, one guy said this, every rooster should crow in his own backyard, amen? I'll just crow, amen? You know, as far as that goes. I just want to say to you, I'm thankful that I'm in that roundup one day in the sky. I'll be in that roundup. And by the way, if you're not, you can be. You could put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you could be part of his, you know, his banquet we're going to have one day in this sky. Let's all stand to our feet, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around this morning. Maybe God has spoken to your heart in some way, in some fashion today. Where do you find yourself at today? Is every head by every eye closed, no one looking around? Maybe you'll say, preacher, I, I'm just going to be honest with you, preacher. I'm here today, and I'm not sure if I measure up. Preacher, I don't know for sure where I'd spend eternity at, and I want you to pray for me. I, I want you to, you know, preacher, I'm just going to be honest with you today. I'm not sure I'm saved. I want to go to heaven, but I'm not sure about that. Is every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. Maybe God's spoken to your heart. You'll say, preacher, would you pray for me? I want to go to heaven, but I'm not sure about it. Pray for me. Anybody at all raise your hand? Anybody at all? God sees that hand. Amen. You can lower your hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? Maybe God's spoken to your hand and your heart and life. Anybody else spoken to your heart? Anybody? How about a Christian? Maybe you're backslidden. Maybe you used to be in church. Maybe you used to come. Hey, let me encourage you to let God have his will and way in your heart and your life. I'm going to give an invitation right now. If you raised your hand that you're not sure you're saved, you raised your hand, you're not sure, we want you to come forward. We'll show you from the Bible how you can be saved, okay? 